fondue. Yes. No, 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 no. Let it ring. No, it could be important. More important than fondue? I'd make the argument that nothing is more important than fondue. Allow me. Arthur, you like fondue, right? Ah! A simple no would suffice. If there's anything I love, it's fondue. I fondue, do you? If you don't, maybe you should. You can use any cheese for fondue, but I find that traditional Gruyere really tastes the best. So I always mix in some Gruyere whenever I fondue. You can also dip just about anything into it, but my favorite by far is Genoa salami. Ham and bread are also good though. When you have salami fondue, it is amazingly filling. I noticed the other day while having fondue with a friend that she actually ate twice as much as I did, even though she's about half my size. That's probably because she was using bread to dip instead of salami. When you have salami and you dip it into cheese, you're going to feel full very, very quickly, believe me. If you've been to Switzerland, or if you know anyone who was born there, you'll know they tend to be quite lean even though they love fatty foods. Surprisingly, they actually eat more calories than Americans, but are skinnier at the same time. This line here, even below France, is uh, Switzerland. They're down at about 5% by 1990. And so you say, well, the Americans must have been overeating by 1990 right um or even before i mean we would have had to have been eating overeating by 1970 really um to be this far ahead of the curve and so do um, were americans eating uh more as the obesity epidemic started and in fact they clearly were not um in fact especially compared to switzerland um between 1961 and 1970 uh, the Swiss were going through an extra 500 calories per day compared to Americans, right? So the lean Swiss, um, who are at 5% obesity by 1990, um, have been eating this huge amount of calories all along and they never became obese. Right. And so that's, um, so that's, a, that's a problem for the calories theory of obesity. You might guess that there is some chemical switch in hibernating animals that slows their metabolism. And you'd be right, but you'll probably be shocked when you learn how this mechanism works. You'll also likely be surprised to learn that this mechanism not only exists in humans, but there's always a large amount of this enzyme present in obese people. This enzyme, known as MCSD1, works in a quite mystifying manner. It takes saturated fat in the body and converts it to unsaturated fat. This in turn impairs mitochondrial function and slows your metabolism, and this allows animals to fatten up for the winter. Also interesting is that there are many studies showing that consuming stearic acid, the main component of beef and dairy fat, actually speeds up your metabolism. While there have been human studies as well, the most interesting study was a rodent study where a high fat diet full of stearic acid reduced their total body fat percentage by 25%, dramatically lowered dangerous visceral fat, and even increased lean tissue by 4%, all on the same calories as the standard chow. <laughs> yeah, you guys will believe anything, man. Oh, look at that. I have never actually seen a man realize his whole life has been a lie. Sounds like crazy talk, but the short, short version is that within cells, succinate is a signaling molecule for the mitochondria, which causes them to both strengthen and create new mitochondria, increasing the energy capacity of the cell. It also increases the production of heat energy by the mitochondria. So as succinate goes up, metabolism goes up. As succinate goes down, metabolism also goes down. Burning fat is a slow process, but it's the cleanest and healthiest form of energy. It's also the main fuel source for the body except during intense exercise. It accounts for about 70% of all energy produced in the body, and even more when in ketosis. 
The more fat you burn, the more succinate accrues in the cell, and the higher your metabolism goes over time. When you don't have enough mitochondria in a cell to burn all fat, then it starts to burn more carbs. This is much quicker, but produces more byproducts in the cell. This wears out your mitochondria over time, and succinate and NAD plus go down. And these are both things that you want as high as possible if you want to have a long healthy life. With a bad diet full of excessive carbs, it can quickly wear out your mitochondria and your ability to produce energy in the cell can eventually lead to diseases like cancer. As I've discussed in the past, cancer is really a disease of metabolism and poor mitochondrial function. Lineolic acid from seed oils burns quickly like carbs do, but it also has many other problems. It quickly depletes succinate and NAD+, and this turns off the CERT3 anti-aging mechanism of your cells and also slows your metabolism. If you don't have enough NAD+, um, CERT3 can't do its job. CERT3 needs NAD+, it's a cofactor, it can't work without it. And interestingly, um, when you inactivate CERT3, what happens is SCD1 goes up. By contrast, longer chain fatty acids create a surplus of succinate and also NAD+. So when a long chain fatty acid like palmitic acid is burned, it stimulates quite a bit of mitochondrial growth. However, stearic acid is a special case. That's because it has an odd number of carbons. This means the body must first carboxylate it. This will dramatically slow down the fat burning process. This tells the mitochondria that not enough energy is being produced and more succinate will accrue over time. And this signals the other mitochondria to start reproducing and also to burn more heat. So more of the energy is actually going towards heat energy, that is, it's being wasted. Think of it like this. The mitochondria produces succinate and NAD plus at a steady rate, while some forms of fuel burn very slowly. So excess succinate is produced that signals that more mitochondria and heat energy must be produced. At this point, you may think this is very complicated and esoteric or perhaps even nonsensical. Nipples for men. Slugs. Slugs? He created slugs. I mean, are we not in the hands of a lunatic? I would have started with lasers. Eight o'clock, day one. <laughs> but when you take a deep dive, this does make sense. Hufas like lineolic acid are mobilized more easily, so they burn off first. And when you have PUFAs and carbs in the blood, it usually means you have eaten recently. This also means there's heat in the body, and in nature this probably means it's also a warmer time of year. The winter is when the body needs to create more heat, and as you eat less over long winter, or fast, you tap more and more into your saturated fat supply. So for the body, it makes perfect sense to spend more energy on heat output when you burn saturated fat. And when you burn fat, you must have mitochondria in order to be able to burn enough fat to get enough energy. So it also makes sense for the mitochondria to increase, which is another very beneficial thing. So not only does saturated fat not cause heart disease, but it is one of the healthiest things you can possibly ingest. It does not spike insulin or raise blood sugar. It does not have to be processed by the liver and it is the cleanest form of energy you can get aside from acetic acid. It also never penetrates the cell membrane of fat cells, which are already full of fat, because it's too large to do this on its own. This is important because this can burst the fat cells and cause them to go into necrosis, which is very harmful. And unlike what some vegans claim, this also means it can never play a part in insulin resistance at a cellular level because it can't ever clog up a cell because it can't enter unless the cell wants it to. You may be interested to know that you can also trigger succinate in other ways, such as fasting. When you fast, you quickly get rid of any unsaturated fats and you will start burning purely saturated fat very quickly. 
Yet the easiest way is through jiggling or bouncing or even slapping fatty parts of the body. Shaking machines were all the rage during the 50s, but Vic Tanner, the biggest proponent, was branded a fraud by academia. So as gyms closed and this kind of machine completely disappeared for some time. In recent times, they have come back with a vengeance because they can not only stimulate your metabolism, but they have very good effects on your tendon, skin, and bones. These days, they are very commonly used by sports teams, mainly for rehab and strengthening collagen in the tendons. This kind of shaking simulates shivering, which stimulates the release of succinate in the body, and this is the secret to the Wim Hof method. If you hate the cold though, you can get all the same results by just shaking your body a little or doing some small hops up and down, or just buy a machine to do it for you. If that's still too much effort, you can just lie in bed and eat some succinate powder to improve your metabolism. In some old videos I mentioned I was surprised no one was using even more chemicals related to the Krebs cycle as supplements, since they already use things to boost NAD, noxaloacetate, and so on. Now this is the main one I had in mind. It's the most obvious one and I'm surprised no one has done anything with it yet. Though while I've never seen succinate for sale as a supplement, it seems that there's already studies out there with positive results using it in that manner. So here's the cliff notes in case all the mumbo jumbo went in one ear and right out the other. What are you trying to say to me? If you want to say something, speak the plain English. Don't run around the house in a little car. Animals go into torpor by triggering an enzyme that desaturates fats, because it turns out unsaturated fats slow the metabolism, while saturated fats speed it up. Seed oils also trigger this enzyme in humans. Lineolic acid from seed oils is especially harmful, and stearic acid, which is the predominant fatty acid in beef and dairy, is especially beneficial. They do this by indirectly affecting succinate and NAD levels because of how fast they produce energy. Succinate can also be taken as a supplement, brought on through shivering, through exercise, or by anything else that makes your fat cells jiggle. Every time I bounce, I feel up to the sky.